I'm here on Norfolk Island's Kingston Jetty. I'm here with the research team from the Flinders University Ecology Group. And we're here to try and find out what is so significant about this area for large tiger sharks. So come on, let's go tag some sharks. There's a huge number of tiger sharks in Norfolk Island, and probably one of the largest aggregation of adult tiger sharks I've ever seen. But the aggregation is actually really close to some of the most popular swimming and surfing areas. And that's causing a bit of concern from the local community because they're worried about the potential interaction between tiger sharks and people. So it's especially the case because that area is also where some of the offal and organic waste is being disposed of in the water. And they are concerned that if you're starting reducing how much of this offal is being thrown in, the sharks might start to disperse a bit more and maybe start spending more time in some of the other areas and maybe looking for food in some of these other areas. So our research is trying to look at the, the relationship between the offal being thrown in the water with the movements and the residency of the tiger sharks around the island. Are these sharks really spending all of that time around that offal disposing area? So using a range of acoustic tracking equipment and satellite tracks, we can better understand the movement of these tiger sharks and try to better understand the relationship between what drives the tiger sharks around Norfolk Island and if this awful disposal is affecting the behavior and the residency of the tiger sharks. We're using two different kind of methods. The first thing that we're doing is actually trying to better understand what the tiger sharks are feeding on. And to do that, we take a bit of blood and a bit of muscle and use biochemistry to relate what the tiger shark flesh and blood is made of to what it be eating. Basically it uses the old idea of you are what you eat. So the signature in your muscle reflects what you've been eating. So using this technology, we can tell if how much of the tiger shark is eating of, of the offal of, of cows or whether the diet is primarily fish, maybe just turtle, or maybe some of the birds that are nesting around the island. The other tool that we're using is acoustic tracking and satellite telemetry. And what we can then do is look at if the movement of tiger sharks is changing with the reduction of the offal disposal which is taking place by now. Well, numbers are great, and obviously as a scientist, we love our numbers. But be able to visualize those numbers on a map and seeing actually where these sharks are moving, is basically essential to explore our data and better understand what these sharks are doing and why they might be doing. So we're using that GIS technology to, to visualize where these sharks are going, to be able to understand the patterns that are occurring, and then we'll be able to relay that to maybe why these sharks are moving to these areas and these, with these locations. The biggest threat to shark is without a doubt of fishing. They take a long time to reach maturity. They don't reproduce very often. And that makes them more similar to marine mammal than fish. And it does of that, any kind of high level of fishing mortality or high level of fishing means that the shark is not gonna be able to withstand that level of pressure and many species are at a high level of risk of extinction. And that's why shark woolly is one of the most threatened vertebrates on the planet. It's actually really interesting because with through all the catching that we've done, we've caught about 100 tiger sharks in that one little bear, and 85% of these tiger sharks were all females. So thanks to all the tracking technology we've been using here, we're now starting to get a much better understanding of where these sharks are going and when. We're seeing that a lot of these tiger sharks are spending summer around Norfolk Island, but they're leaving in winter and spending a lot of time around New Caledonia. But we don't really quite know yet the driver of these movements. Why did they come to Norfolk Island? Why did they leave Norfolk Island? Why are they going to New Caledonia? So what we're going to be doing next is using some new technology to try to better understand the, these drivers and movements. We now have an ultrasound that we can use to check if these tiger sharks are pregnant or not and better see if the tiger sharks here are just close to parturition, close to giving birth, and whether this might be a bit of a pupping area for this big female tiger shark. We're also planning a trip to New Caledonia to see if we can find this Norfolk tiger shark in New Caledonia and see why they might be going to that 
uh, to that area of New Caledonia where these tiger sharks seem to aggregate as well. The local community on Norfolk has been absolutely amazing. They've been fantastic. And realistically, there's no way we could have done all the things we've done here without their support and help. We've had locals coming on the boat, helping us out. We have locals diving with us to, to retrieve and download and serve as receivers. We're using the locals to go fishing and catch these tiger sharks that, so that we can tag them and take the samples that we need. The support's been tremendous across the four years. And I'm actually looking forward to coming back here, but just on a holiday rather than to work.